Hello and welcome to another edition of PCHEM Lab Screencast. I'm Professor Jeff Yarger and today we're going to briefly describe in Chemistry 343 at Arizona State University what uh, we typically do for experiment number three which is an enol uh, ketone equilibrium and we usually use NMR to look at this uh, equilibrium. You know the objective of this lab is to determine the thermodynamic uh, parameters associated with this equilibrium or this kenol eton reaction and discuss the effect that solvent has on the equilibrium coefficient. So um, what it briefly shows here is this is the diketone. This would be a simple one. This is acetyl acetone, typically known as ACAC, um, where it has methyls on either side of the uh, diketone. This is two ketones, so a diketone. And then it undergoes an equilibrium in solution to an enol form shown here, and there's several resonant forms with an intermediate. So these are all fast equilibrium, or in other words, going very fast rapid exchange between these resonant forms and then there's a slow equilibrium between the ketone form and the enol form which is basically shown here and this is another resonance form of it here. Um, and we can easily start to see why NMR would be good. So if we quickly look here we have two methyls they're equivalent by symmetry to this molecule so we'll get one peak in the kind of one you know one or two ppm range uh, for those uh, six protons that represent the two methyl groups on this diketone. Um, and then we'll get another one for the methylene in between. So we'll basically have two resonances because of that. But what will we have different to the enol form of this? Well, you can see now this methylene is now just a CH methine and the other proton comes up here and very acidic, shifted very what's called downfield or to a much less shielded position in NMR. Um, so we go from having a methylene here to having two separate protons, a CH and a, a basically acidic proton that are shifted way downfield or to higher ppm values than this methylene would be. And then we still have the methyls here, however they will be slightly shifted as well. So NMR has high enough resolutions to resolve these methyls, these enol methyls, from these ketone methyls and it easily resolves the difference of how this methylene turns into an acid proton and a CH. So that's why it makes a nice um, tool for monitoring that equilibrium. So this gives an introduction, I'm not going to go through that except to say we typically use the simple ACAC uh, which is just methyls but you can use several other uh, diketones that set up an equilibrium with an enol and this is typically done by uh, on either side of the diketone just substituting the methyl for something like here like a uh, like an ethyl group or a, a trifluoro a methyl group etc you can even make ring structures so you can uh, definitely um, uh, do many different diketones to look at this. You don't have to uh, do just a simple. For, for Chemistry 343 we usually often stick with ACAC, but we have several of these other compounds that can be done uh, and, and obviously add a few more resonances to the NMR um, and set up different equilibrium. The reason this is important are diketones are very important in many reactions their equilibrium set up with an enol is what often drives a lot of organic reactions uh, in these class of materials. So looking at this chemical equilibrium is looking at basically the, the percent of enol versus ketone you have in dynamic equilibrium in solution. And it will change at different temperatures uh, and that change in equilibrium as a function of temperature is what gives us access to uh, you know the thermodynamic parameters, right? We know that the equilibrium coefficient is related to the um, delta G, and then by knowing its temperature effect, we can get delta H, delta S, etc. Um, and and it's shown here, and it's typically known as the Van Hoff equation or a Van Hoff plot, where you plot on the y-axis the natural log of the equilibrium, on the x-axis you plot one over the temperature. So now the slope is related to your enthalpy and your y-intercept is related to your entropy. Um, and so we usually plot ln of k versus 1 on temperature to get the thermodynamic relations. We have our equilibrium directly so the ln of that is directly related to delta G, our Gibbs free energy. Um, and so that's what we do as a function of temperature but we also set up different equilibria in different solvents 
based on the polarity of the solvent. And that has to do with which of these gets favored, you know, under different, because they have a different dipole moment in different solvents. And you're going to look at that as well by doing this in several different solvents. So in one solvent, you're going to do it as a function of temperature. And that's typically in DMSO. Um, and then you're going to also run several other solvents. A couple are listed here of examples, but it can be any of uh, common solvents as long as it varies from very polar to nonpolar. It changes its dipole moment significantly. And you can run anywhere between four and seven uh, different solvents. Look up their dipole moment and be able to see how the polarity or dipole of the solvent affects the equilibrium. Um, and so that's basically the experiment. The second week, you're going to do a lot of ab initio modeling calculations where you can model the effect of solvent or uh, because you can add solvation spheres in these uh, sophisticated ab initio models to model to see how it changes that equilibrium by setting up both the uh, ketone and enol forms and calculating the energies and looking at the energy differences when you do this uh, under different solvation uh, conditions, um, etc. And then, of course, you're going to analyze uh, your NMR data and your uh, computational data uh, to see how they compare to see what the effect of solvent is, uh, etc. And I've given you kind of a couple example tables that will uh, you'll end up setting up, like for different solvents, how what's the percent enol, what's the percent ketone, the equilibrium, the delta G, which are all you know, related in your exact diketone. And then computationally, you can put what the energies are for each of them, what the dipole moment is for the solvent you're using, what the uh, dicarbonyl uh, dihedral angle is uh, to see how that, you know, affects things, etc. And this will give you a good sense at a molecular level of why this equilibrium changes in this experiment. Uh, besides showing you the handout, I quickly want to show you from uh, a year or two ago, I've deleted out the name, kind of what an overall report looks like when it's done that has done this exact same experiment on ACAC using NMR and Gaussian 09, which will be used this semester if you're taking it in the fall 2012 of uh, uh, Chem 343. I'm not going to bother to uh, go through a lot of details. You can see this one's already graded. What I want to jump down to um, is uh, you know, of course, they introduce the topic, etc. They introduce what the equilibrium they're setting up, how they're going to calculate the thermodynamic parameters, um, you know, what thermodynamics they're looking at, etc. And this person did fairly well. What different solvents uh, they're going to use? And, and let's start with looking at their graphs. So uh, it's the proton chemical shift in ppms, and they show a nice assignment that you can resolve the methyl on the enol from the methyl of the ketone, from the methylene of the keto uh, of the enol, and then even the acid proton, which they probably should blow that up and show that in a little more detail. And you can integrate each of these peaks individually. You can do some for consistency, like for example, uh, the methylene of the ketone versus the methyl of the ketone, right, should be in a 6 to 2 or 1 to 3 ratio. And you can make sure you get self-consistency. And then, of course, when you average anything of the enol to the ketone, it gives you the percent once you take into account how many protons are in each of those. For example, if you do these two, um, there's a 2 to 1 difference in just the number of protons. And then you have to take that into account before you look at the ratio between the integrals. Um, Etc. Then once you have that, you can calculate the equilibrium and you can do that when it's done at several different temperatures here. And, you know, again, if you plot ln of k versus the inverse of temperature, they forgot to put their units here, uh, then you can fit that and the slope is related to the enthalpy and the y-intercepts uh, related to the entropy. And of course, the equilibrium itself is related to the delta G and they give some of those parameters here. Uh, then they do that for a bunch of different solvents, and they can get the percent enol, ketone, uh, etc. Obviously, the percent ketone is just uh, 1 minus um, uh, 100 minus the uh, percent of enol. Then they can look at the dipole moment, which you can look at for each of the solvents or calculate for each of the solvents. Look at that, what they measure directly in NMR versus what you get calculated. And uh, and then discuss and compare some of those ratios. And then at the end, um, they provide all their calculations, uh, examples of how they get their equilibrium, how they take into account the number of protons, how they do error, etc.
So I hope that gives you an initial sense for this. And uh, Eno Ketone Lab, which is a very fun uh, lab to, to start with, and uh, uh, good luck.